What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Dangle Bad Selly DBC with Chris Meany and Eric Young, presented by Points Bet here live on our FTN YouTube page. You're listening on iTunes and Spotify. We also appreciate you. Smash the like button here on our video. If you have any comments, any questions, you can leave them there. I know that uh, things are heating up in fantasy hockey, some leagues are over. Uh, the Dangle Bad Selly Championship is this week, but just something a little friendly reminder off the top. I just thought about this because a couple people asked me uh, in our FTN Discord uh, about some advice this week. Keep an eye on your matchup, head-to-head -head matchups. If you're over at Yahoo, it's most likely two weeks. So don't use all of your moves today. Uh, the NHL season wraps up next Thursday. And over at Yahoo, the default setting, if your championship week is this week, is basically a two-week finals for you so it's not going to wrap up on sunday you're going to have some games monday tuesday wednesday and thursday so just keep an eye on that don't use all those moves save them uh we're here for you if you have any questions at all and again on itunes and spotify rate review subscribe you can hop on over to the youtube section leave the comment in the comment section always circling back on these videos at the eric young at chris meany on the x machine ey what's up man happy tuesday a massive 13 game slate today yeah, we're getting down to the nitty gritty. And like, I mean, a month ago, you're like, man, it's just never going to get here. It's never going to get here. And we're going to blink. And I'm going to be working and I'm going to be mad. And uh, I don't know. I might have to quit again just for the Stanley Cup playoffs just for a couple months. Going to miss some playoff Actually, hockey? Oh, I mean, it's uh, right now, in between now and August is probably the busiest I've ever been in my career. And uh, wow. I'm looking forward to it in a lot of ways, but I mean, it just, it's an, as a hockey fan, it just comes at an unfortunate time. It's not like I'm gone all the time, but like I'll get Predators tickets. I'm going to have to sell a bunch of them because I won't be here. Um, but I'll go to as many games as I can. Yeah, you're going to enjoy your Preds. It may, may just go on a little bit of a sneaky run there. We'll see what does happen. Again, there's just a, a handful of games left uh, across the NHL. Uh, most teams have kind of clinched here in the Eastern Conference. Uh, even the Lightning, that first wild card spot is clinched. Uh, looks like they're going to be locked into that one spot. They're to six back of the Leafs, not going to catch Toronto, uh, even though both teams have five games left. Detroit at 84 points, holding down the second and final wild card spot. But the Penguins also have... 84 points. You are rock, rocking Detroit. You've been pushing for the Red Wings to make the playoffs here I'm on the bandwagon uh, the past few weeks. So you are on the bandwagon. <laughs> they do have a game in hand on the Pens. The Capitals have 83. The Flyers have 83. Huge the Devils in the yeah, absolutely. Huge. The Devils and the Sabers are still hanging around. They're not officially eliminated, but it's going to be really tough for them. They both have 79 points and four games left. And the Islanders are holding down the final spot in the Metro in the West. Uh, same sort of deal. A lot of teams are clinched. Dallas, Colorado, Winnipeg in the Central. We have Vancouver and Edmonton in the Pacific. Uh, the Canucks at 104, five-point cushion there on the Oilers, who do have two games in hand, by the way. Uh, only 76 played. Most teams at 78. The Kings with 93 points, not clinched yet. Your Preds at 94, holding down the first wild card spot. Then we have the Vegas Golden Knights. Thomas Hurler returned. Last night made his Vegas yeah. debut. What a scary squad, man, at full health. 92 points. They, they the weren't even have Mark Stone yet. I know. I know. And Lord, that's, I was just thinking about their lines last night, too. Like, because Eichel, two goals last night, Marsh. So we always talk about those two. They're awesome. Barbers have a great. Like, yeah. that line's been together all year. They're fantastic in the playoffs. Then they're going to probably have Chandler Stevenson. Chandler Stevenson and Stone, that's a great connection. Those two are going to play together. Most likely, Hurdle's going to play on that right. line. He's going to be in the middle. They either put Stevenson on the wing, vice versa. And then a duo that's been really good since the deadline, especially lately sneaky good, is William Carlson and Anthony Mantha. So like they're, yep. <laughs> that's their third line. Th this team is loaded on the blue line as well. So it's gonna be, they're going to be a tough out. And I just, I'm just hoping for our Dallas futures that it's not Dallas and Vegas first round because I'll just be devastated with, with that matchup. I mean, it'll be good, but I just don't want to see a first round. Uh, so I'm really hoping that the Golden Knights can get that three spot in the Kings and that LA is one of those wild card spots. It could be your Preds as well as Dallas, uh, or they could get Vancouver. So we'll see how it plays out. But Minnesota and St. Louis are the only two teams that haven't um, been eliminated in the West, but they're not going to – I can pretty much – guarantee it it's not going to happen for yeah. either of those two teams uh especially the wild uh, they are nine points back and they'll be probably eliminated after tonight so lots of hockey here to get to 
Want to say what up to the crew? Troy says he won his fantasy hockey league the other day. Special shout out to us, Philip Forsberg, steal of the draft. It was something weird about Yahoo having Philip Forsberg buried around, I don't know, ranking 200, I think is what it yeah. was. It just didn't make any sense to us on uh, draft day. And sometimes when you draft on those sites, Yahoo, ESPN, you know, they there's some guys that are buried. But of course, in high stakes league, this was a, a fourth round pick. Yeah, I'm looking right now. Yahoo had um and Yahoo had this guy like 171 or something silly like that. Uh, and his he's currently number nine in fantasy hockey, depending on your setting. Jay Felicia, let's do that hockey. Hurricanes are going to go on a little bit of a run, I think. Daily handle with Jordan Allen. Good morning, Means EY and everybody. Let's go. Playoffs around the corner. Should be 14 games, not 13. Bad luck. I mean, what's one more game to break down here on a Tuesday? Uh, Troy, It is it is the point in the season where we have to be wary of taking big favorites that are already qualified for the playoffs. Yes, good point. Uh, a bunch of maintenance days, et cetera, are on, upon us. I would agree with that. Uh, we'll keep an eye on, I mean, as of right now, talking to you guys, it's just 10 after 10. Don't really have a lot of news on whether guys are going to sit out, but we will see it, uh, especially in the last week of the season. That's why I think most yeah. people like to wrap up their fantasy hockey season this past week. Uh, so you don't yeah. fall into that over the. As Don talked about enough, right in the fantasy hockey world, like it should be over. Yeah, it, 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 it's, it, it's certainly not the norm, but it should be over. Like this, this week and the partial week next week shouldn't be part of anything. Like Troy yeah. said, like I mean, type of guys play. Yeah, in head-to-head formats, I'm ter- I'm certainly fine with that. In the high stakes, like I like it to play out. It's not a head-to-head format. You play out the entire season. It's just you'll right. have maybe a little bit of bad luck on in the final couple of days. But yeah, it's like fantasy football. That's why we don't play week 18. You know, the NBA. I'm in an NBA league that's already over. It is over a week and a half before the NHL because in the NBA, everybody is sitting. Uh, the Blue Jackets. Beat the brakes off the Flyers with eight AHL players in their lineup. We were actually just talking to you, talking about you before we got on uh, about the Islanders and the Blue we're Jackets. About we want to watch. We need to watch a Blue Jackets versus Islanders game with you. We are uh, we are on board to do that. Whether we stream it live, uh, well, it's something that we have to do because uh, I think that's going to so, be that would yeah. be a must watch entertainment there for us at least uh, and for you. Okay, thirteen games. I'll kick it to you. Uh, there's a game that I really like, a team that I really like that we always talk about, and I think we should start strong on this show. We'll do what we normally do. EY and I were back and forth last night wondering if we were just going to go go like our, fi- our favorite five, seven games and then recap at the end, but we've done this all year, so let's just yeah, finish strong. You we'll roll through the 13 games. Uh, we won't have a pick for everyone. We'll have a couple goal scorers for sure, and uh, we'll wrap with our favorite picks, but uh, always have timestamps here on some of these games. So let's throw to you, EY. Uh, what's your favorite game on the slate? A couple picks that you like here. I mean, the Washington Detroit has got a lot on the line. I don't know if that's going to be my favorite game, but I mean, that's going to be a game that I'm going to definitely be following along and probably watch the duration of it. Um, yeah, so Washington. There, then. Yeah, I, I've got o- OV and La Perrier. Le Perrier is playing on the third line, but he's playing on the on the top power play, and he's plus four ten. So that's just something to keep in mind. I'm not saying he's going to score. I'm just saying if you want to sprinkle a dollar on it or something, it's something that that could pay out pretty well, or put it in some kind of a weird parlay. Detroit Sard, I'm going Larkin, and I'm going Kane. I think Detroit right, wins a- this. I want them yeah. to win this, and and I just think like Alex Lyon is becoming Alex Lyon again at the right time. Patrick Kane has turned into Patrick Kane. Things are kind of clicking for them. Like there's, there's this weird mix of young and old. I just would rather see them than Washington. Sick of the caps. Sick of the caps. I get it. Crazy. Ovechkin, like the run that he has been on right uh, over these past couple of weeks, man, he's dead in the water. Easily, uh, easily over 30 goals, right? I mean, what's he going to finish here with? He's got a couple games left. He's at 30. He's at 29. Uh, yeah, he's just been on a, a torrid pace. 
And a lot of people were thinking that maybe he wouldn't even score 15. So he's uh, he's going to be right there uh, next year, I think, uh, knocking on the door. Maybe he needs another year to pass Gretzky, but uh, he's going to hang around for it anyways. I like Dylan Strom to pick up an assist. I don't like a whole lot from this game. I just I don't have a, a, to- a great yeah. feel on it. The Capitals are plus 125 on the money line. That's the best number. Using the parlay calculator is over at Bet365, and the Wings are at minus 145. I have noticed Lions game's been pretty good. Over the past couple of weeks, he was good for the Panthers down the stretch. I do believe last year, uh, for mo- in moments, um, yeah. I even to Brinkat, like I was looking at Alex to Brinkat, his point prop like does stand out. But man, this guy's been super quiet. Like I just, I don't know. Like I thought it was just an Ottawa yeah, thing last quiet. year. Yeah, I just haven't been. I mean, I haven't watched a lot of Wings games. I know that they've been much better defensively since Larkin returned, but. To look at the game log for Alex DeBrincat, I mean, yeah, you see 24 goals, 36 points is a good good season. But from April 7th to March 8th, the last month, he's got one goal. He only has yeah. four games of the point. Uh, That's the wildest. He, he's not really even shooting. Uh, but with all of that said, minus 120 for a point tonight is pretty solid. I mean, he's not even skating on that first power play all the time. Uh, I'll just, I'm going to go Strom assist is plus 125. I do like DeBrincat. I'll probably sprinkle DeBrincat point just because of the the value, the matchup, him and Kane still together. Kane playing good, like you mentioned. I like Ovechkin for four shots at, at minus 130 there. So um, we got a couple comments here. It's uh, DeBrincat just doesn't skate hard. <laughs> doesn't work up a sweat. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. It's It's really strange. I, I this is very unnoticeable when I watch yep. Wings games. I'll say that. Uh, okay, moving along. Let's uh, let's talk Dallas. Let's skip around here just for a second. We got the Dallas Stars and the Buffalo Sabers. A big win from the Stars. Man, the Stars burned me, broke my heart over the weekend. Lost to Chicago, uh, but then Oof. they the very next night they went into Colorado. I get it. There's no Miko Ranton in there, but I thought that the Stars. You know, the score was tight. They sat, sat back a little bit in the third period, uh, but I thought that they dummied Colorado for the most part. They really took it to them. So usual suspects here for me today. Jamie Ben for a point at minus 120. Wyatt Johnson for a point at minus 125. Tyler Sagan for a point at minus 110. I like all of these guys. Uh, I would probably rank them Ben, Johnson, Sagan, but I think they're all in play. Jamie Ben and Wyatt Johnson lead the Dallas Stars in points over the last two weeks. They have five goals and 10 points each. Uh, they also lead the team in shots on goal over that span as well. Wyatt Johnson is juiced to three shots. Uh, but maybe something you want to do, consider a ladder or something, because the guy's had uh, at least four shots in four of his past five games. Man, he's just uh, him and Jamie Ben are single handedly winning fantasy hockey championships. Honestly, uh, they really are. Jamie Ben has been EY. Jamie Ben, it looks like Jamie Ben from, I don't know, like five years, ago, five years ago, eight. Yeah, maybe even further than that. Like this guy yeah. is, I'm shocked with with the performances that we've seen from Jamie Ben uh, of lately. Uh, he's got goals in three straight games. He's got goals in nine of his last ten. Uh, he's hit the score sheet in four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen of his last seventeen games. Jamie Ben has picked up a point in fifteen of his last seventeen games, but yet he is still minus one twenty to pick up a point tonight against the Buffalo Sabres uh, who have been one of the, I don't know, most up and down teams in the NHL this year. So I really like Ben here today. And even his shot prop, uh, I thought I saw two and a half. It's been one and a half juice for a while. Finally, uh, two and a half is plus one Oh five for Jamie Ben to pick up three shots. He's got 10 shots in his last two games. He's had at least three shots in three straight and five of six. Just chemistry with Wyatt Johnson, who, you know, it's hard to believe that this is a sophomore kid. He's just a child. Uh, and he looks old. he looks like one of the best players every time I watch them. And they're loaded with talent up and down their lineup. So uh, yeah. I know we've been talking a lot about the Dallas Stars in this show. We hit the future the other night over one and a, uh, over 105 points. 
Uh, we have them at like two to one to win the division. I think that they can lock it down tonight with a W. And we've just been riding them all, all across the board. So I like Ben and Johnson to continue. And and Tyler Sagan uh, is, is having the same type of season as Ben. These guys, I, th- I remember having talks with you. I think it was a four stack lines about how Jamie Ben and Tyler Sagan didn't look any good and how they were overpaid and the stars were in trouble. It's like, wow, these guys are getting paid so much and they look like third liners and this they've drafted so well. I think in the, in the draft that they got me or Heisken in, they also got Jake Ottinger and, and Jason Robertson yeah. and they drafted. Oh, Mike Johnson. So they've, yeah, they've drafted really well lately. Rupe hints adding, you know, veteran pieces like Joe Pavelski. So uh, enough about the Dallas stars, but guys, there's ter- terrific value up and down. The board with them uh you probably have one or two goal scorers i would say and shout out to jj paterka um you know he didn't do much in the last game but yeah. he's been shooting and firing yeah uh, players are good players too uh tage thompson uh 195 and i'm going to go back to dylan cousins at plus 400 uh the last buffalo game i looked watched he looked really um he really jumped off uh the page of me was was, was playing hard skating well um uh, every time he touched the puck it seemed like something was happening um, he looked motivated, you know, and like they're really playing for nothing. Um, certainly won't be the same coach, I don't think. Won't be a lot of the same players. I think a lot's going to change there. But uh, that's just, that's a gut feeling more than anything. And uh, I test, like from watching the last Buffalo game, um, he looked noticeable. Um, so, yeah, I like that. D- Dallas, I'm going Rupe Hints at 190 and Wyatt Johnson at 210. Wyatt Johnson, like I'm going to start building a, a DFS lineup around him. And uh, I think it's a good place to start. He's cheap and he's got 30 goals playing in the second power play. Like they roll all four lines. It, it, it might be the deepest team it in is the NHL the right now. And if Ottinger turns into good Ottinger, I mean, just good luck, man. It, it's, they're just going to be, they're just going to be hard. Like there's nothing they can't do. It is, it is the deepest team. They have eight guys with 20 goals eight guys with 20 goals and their fourth line is not your typical fourth <clears> line <throat> you know gonna go out right. there and play four minutes and and just like throw body checks like they have yeah. sam Steele, who's who can yeah. score like this guy played craig on the first smith. line minnesota He's like a, a really not long ago player craig smith of uh, faxa who is a former first round pick who is not going to live up to potential. He's more known for his defensive no. game, but he's yeah. he can score too. Like they have a fourth line. He turns into a savage in the playoffs, right? Like he does oh, it yeah. every, every every year. He's one of their more important players. And I saw this, and I don't know who brought it up, but I wish I could remember, but I can't. Saying like basically, like the board like rolls those lines, and uh, Craig Smith is the guy that plays the least amount of time, and he plays well over twelve minutes nightly. That means yeah. everyone's involved. Right. Like that's that's a lot of time for a player that plays on the fourth line. and doesn't play any power play time. Why Johnson's a superstar, I think, is like as well in a yeah. way. He's 20 years old. He's 20 yeah. and he's like he he's is, a child. All, he followed up his rookie <laughs> campaign with a beautiful sophomore campaign and it was a slow start for him. But he was actually their best player. I know Rupe Hintz stole the show. With in terms of points, but he was their best player. He in five and five, he was the number one guy on the team in like generating chances, expected goals for. Uh, yeah, they just have three lines that can come at you. You mentioned the fourth line, and we talked about it a little bit there, but they have three lines like that can come at you in waves. Like, okay, you're gonna have your best pair against Rupe Hints, most likely, and Jason Robertson, but then you have to deal with Duchesne and Sagan, and then you're you have to deal with Jamie Ben and Wyatt Johnson. So yeah, they're they're a complete mismatch across the board. I think that the one and a half is is in play. Um, I was looking at them in 60s, minus 140. I was thinking about a two-unit play on the minus 140, but I, I think you know, two units on minus 140 or just one unit on minus 140, and then maybe a, a 0.5 or or something like that on the on the on the puck line. I think that they're just, they know it's like one or two more wins. They lock down this division. They get home ice really hoping from a betting standpoint that they don't get the president's trophy. Jay's like, I never heard you talk about the stars means it's like nonstop. <laughs> Jay's going to clip a couple things for us. And I already told him this morning, can you guess on who it's going to be? And he's like, yeah, I know who it's going to be. It's going to be Jamie Ben, Wyatt Johnson or Tyler Sagan. Maybe just group Wyatt Johnson at, 
and Jamie Ben together, <laughs> Jay, because I think they're both great plays and they correlate. If one guy gets a point, yeah. most likely the other guy gets a point. I know that Ben's on that top power play, but the five and five game is so strong. We'll move on. A lot of talk there about Dallas, but we really like them. Uh, and they've been paying the bills and hopefully they continue to. You're up next. Where are we going? Let's go uh, New York Rangers, New York Honors. Like, even when these teams are bad, like, it's still fun, right? Like, they just yeah. hate each other. Uh, I, I've been to games in, in both the Barclays Center. Well, when, it, when they play the Barclays Center and um, Madison Square Garden, and they the same Potvin sucks. Like Potvin hasn't played hockey in thirty years. Oh, Potvin sucks. Yeah, that's jokes. Like there's still a chant that goes on because of this rivalry. And I'm not talking like you're not guessing what it is. It's clear. It's whistle, 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 whistle. Pot van sucks, and they both uh, and the Rangers do it every time the Islanders play there. So uh, this will be a cool game. I mean, I you know Islanders, I think, have played their way basically out. Mm. Um, they're in, man. They're in that final spot in the Metro. Right I now. don't. They're in. Who can, Detroit can't catch them. That's the thing that's happening right now. Is yes, like Washington can't. Washington and Philadelphia, like. They where have they been? Especially the Flyers have been awful. So they may just fall. Washington's in lost six games in a row, and Flyers have lost seven. So they're nowhere to be found. That's that's what I mean. Like the Islanders are just going to maybe get in via default, unless the Penguins. I mean, tough. They like, needed two points last night. Unless the Penguins, yeah. you know, start to rattle off some wins here, the Islanders may just fall into a playoff spot. May see your wings with more points. I don't know if that would work out, but it's possible. Like Detroit can't catch yeah. them. The only way Detroit can make the playoffs is if they get that wild card spot. So, yeah, I mean, I see what you're seeing. They, I'm not super impressed with any of these teams besides Pen- no. the Penguins. Seem to be the most out of all out of the five. Pittsburgh seems to be the most showing us something. We can go into a long talk about <laughs> playoff formats and oh, more yeah. teams being in the playoffs and how nobody wants to win. And <laughs> at the same time, this is how the salary cap. This is what it's for, right? They, this is yeah. what they want. They want everyone yeah. to be alive and every game to be interesting. And like the truth yeah. is, is like in the old form, like at this time of year, like it was over, right? It was yeah. Things yeah. were things were mostly set. And in the in the East, I mean, it there's it could be any which way. Anyways, Rangers Islanders, I think it's going to be interesting. Um, Panarin one hundred and fifty, Kreider at one eighty five, um, <clears throat> Nelson two hundred and ten. He has uh, odds never. I mean, I know he doesn't score 50 goals, but like this guy's, I don't know. I feel like I've been like this whole year or like a broken record with Nelson. Like people just don't talk about him enough. Such mm-hmm. a good player, such an important player for the honors. When he plays well and he's healthy, the honors are a tough team to beat. Um, Brock Nelson at 210 and Horvat at 250. Um, Panarin is having just such an unbelievable season and, and really. Unbelievable. I think we talked about him a little bit last week. The one thing with Panarin that I think Rangers fans need to need to see is him just show up in the playoffs. I think he maybe had one point in that seven yeah. years against the Devils last year. There's no excuse. He was brutal. Here. He was invisible. Invisible. You, in particular, talked about him and Laviolette and the change, and we talked and stressed about how this looks like a different Panarin because he's been more aggressive, like he's been shooting a puck more. Uh, he's. We know about his playmaking abilities, his nickname – red man like all those things and shout out to uh curb curb your enthusiasm when uh larry david was talking up panarin in, in one of the latest episodes and it's just great to see i love it he's like what about the bread man the hands he's just like so good uh but but he is not even going to be in the mvp conversation because everybody else is like there's just the top of the board has been so elite and he should be right for a guy that, yep. that may finish with like 115 points or something anyways he's been a a walking I don't know, ATM machine with these two-point props. I know it's Sorokin, so it's we're getting a, a decent number today, like plus 110 for two points, but I think I'm still going to pull the trigger on that. And another guy, because of Panarin, that's been playing really good, that I think the hockey community was just uh, sour on for the first four years. I get it. He wasn't great. He didn't live up to the number one overall uh, selection, but you got to remember these guys are kids. They develop differently. And Alexi Lafreniere is looking like a, a really good He's player really in the young. NHL. Yeah, yeah. He, he really is. So uh, credit to the Rangers for hanging on. Capo, Caco, maybe not so much, but Lafreniere is looking like a, a really strong pick and a really good player. And credit to Panera and those two with Vincent Trocek. All those three have been together all year long for the most part. Uh, plus 105 for Alexi Lafreniere to pick up a point. And honestly, I mean, he just... 
you got Panarin on the one side, which is great, but look at Lafreniere's games. I mean, he's coming off a two point game. Uh, he had a two point game against the Devils April 3rd. He had a hat trick and five points against Arizona. Uh, he's got four multi point games over his last six. Uh, before that, he had a five game point streak. So this guy is, he's basically been plus money all year long. Uh, yeah. and I, and I've been taking him, you know, 27 goals. He's up to in 56 points, a really nice season over 200 shots, shooting the puck as well, throwing his body around 70 plus hits. Uh, he's, uh, certainly returned value in the fantasy hockey community. He's currently a top 150 player and he was drafted outside 280. Uh, so he's had a really, really nice season. I think the Rangers probably take care of business, but it should be a good game. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's, uh, we got slight favorites here for, the New York Rangers at minus 130 and the Islanders you can get at plus 110 uh, on the money line. But I do think the Rangers continue to roll. President's Trophy is uh, in their sights and they're just playing really good hockey. There's good value as well. Amika Zibanejad for a point at minus 150 and Chris Kreider for a point at minus 145. Those two players oh are playing God. really good lately as well. Uh, you're getting the value because Sorokin's between the pipes here. Islanders Rangers at the stadium series was electric. Uh, the thought of the Islanders potentially making the playoffs makes me want to throw up. Hey man, they've won four straight and they're locked in right now. Uh, with the decline of the caps, pens Islanders, if the blue jackets don't make the playoffs next year, he says he may cry, but you, I said it, man, it's um, the caps have lost six straight. The flyers have lost seven straight. The Islanders have won four straight and they only have one point a one point cushion on the pens and two on the cap. So as bad as those other teams are playing, they're still right there in it. Uh, next up, where are we going? Carolina, Boston. Oh, baby. That's an East. Yeah. That's an East heavyweight tilt, right? Like both those teams are in, but I think this is going to be a game. It should be a game. These two teams played last week and yep. I think the Bruins took it to them early uh in the game i think they got up i remember i was i i had a couple lineups in dfs and i was like ah, i'm just i don't have a real strong feel on boston and carolina maybe it's like a one nothing game maybe i won't touch it uh and the bruins jumped out to like a three nothing lead in the first period they end up winning the game four one uh boston man like people will count them out this year from what they did last year but they've been pretty much just as good they've won four straight games uh the only play I really like in this game is Pavel Zaka. And I know I sound like a broken record. You've been on like you would been on all year. It just, when I see odds at minus 110 for Zaka to get a point playing with arguably the best goal scorer in the NHL, if it's not Matthews, it's David Pasternak. Uh, and I look at this guy. He's got 37 helpers on the season, he's got points in six straight games. He's got points in three, six, 12, 14 of his last 16 games. Like, I'm just going to follow a trend here. Zaka, point. That's my play. What do you got? Uh, yeah, I'm going to go uh, Gensel to score. He's been automatic yeah, he's been for awesome. them, which is great to see, right? Like, you, you, when you worry about, you know, not playing with Crosby, not playing with one of the best players, is he really as good as as everyone thinks and is he as good a hockey player as everyone thinks because he's not going to be with Crosby it's like well you know Sebastian Ajo not a bad guy not a guy a bad guy to be playing with yeah and and Gensel carries the play he's just a smart player man he's just a good hockey player plus 210 and I'm going to go Sveshnikov he scored uh was it not yesterday the day before yeah I think I think his last game yeah yeah last game and so when I feel what he's definitely uh, susceptible to that, like streaky scoring, like he gets one to go. And then it's like, every time he touches the pockets in the back of the net, and then he'll go, you know, five, six, eight games without scoring at all. So uh, I'm going to go Sveshkinkov at 290. Uh, Boston, of course, pasta plus 100. And I'm going Marshand again at 250. Playoffs are coming and Marshand's going to turn into an animal all over again. Yeah, he but is. Um, undoubtedly. We have the... We have the under 70 points for Brad Marchand as a future, and he's really flirting with 70, and I get a little nervous about it. Um, we talked about in the discords. Like I've noticed some some people in the discord, like they're waking up with some extra money in their pocket. Like we had Alexander Georgiev the other day for over 34 wins, and it's like a nice little surprise. I mean, it's something that you have to wait for for like six months, and you wake up, it's like, oh, I got a few extra bucks because we hit a future. Uh, but Marchand is close, man. 28 goals and 38 assists. He's right there at that 70 point mark. He's got points in three straight. Yeah, he's the type of player that 
I'm not saying he's taken anything off, but he's the type of player that could actually take his game to another level uh, once you know the puck drops under the bright light. So do you have a, a lean on which team you like here? Boston minus 105, Carolina minus 111. I, I, I kind of feel like the Hurricanes will get revenge on them tonight. It should be Kochikov between the pipe. The big pipes have been going back and forth. Uh, I kind of lean Carolina here uh, in this spot. Yeah, I think when we talked about this, you leaned Carolina last time. And yeah, I said, well, I think Boston. I think Boston. And I thought Boston on the road. And I'm going to lean back to Boston at home. I mean, they were, at the start of the year, they were basically unbeatable at home. That trend yeah. hasn't continued because there's just no way that was going to keep up. But I, I don't think they lost a game until like end of December, January. And I'm still looking and they have still have one of the it looks like yeah they have the best home record in the eastern conference so the only team with sub 10 wins in regulation they're 24 9 and 6 at home right. uh in the west the abs are 29 8 and 1 and vancouver's 26 9 and 4 edmonton's 26 8 and 4 so there's a handful of teams that are sub 10 losses in regulation at home uh but the only one in the eastern conference the boston burns probably the right call Man, Carolina's dead. Home team. ice isn't a thing as much as it used to be because the coaching is so good now. Um, and the arenas are, are often very similar, you know, there's things like that. Like there's no advantage yeah. to playing in Buffalo and you know, the Zamboni driver pressing the door so the puck when it rings around it squirts out in front of the net, like you know, the things yeah. like that don't exist anymore. But when a team is good at home, I think it's just about confidence. And I just think Boston believes that they can't be beat when they're at home. So I, if I'm going to lean, I'm going to say Boston tonight. You, you've you heard stories of back in the day, like in the 70s oh, yeah. with the Habs, with the Habs. They used to, they in the opposing bench, they would freshly paint the bench. It. it would yeah. just be an annoying the dressing room. smell. Yeah. I heard Scotty Bowman. I heard I, Scotty Bowman was asked about it. Uh, of course, Red Wings legend, but Habs too. Um, he was asked about it one time and he just like, he didn't say yes or no, but he just like had this smirk on his face. Like, oh yeah, I mean, Hey, <laughs> Bruins are coming into town. We had to freshly paint their bench. Uh, and we made sure there was lots of co coats on that bench. So, you know, they had the headache halfway through the game. Leave in go sharks. You know what? Still in uh, it. Shout out Satterlin and Granlin. These guys have been pretty good yep. for us lately too. Go sharks. Uh, you know, uh, got, the frozen four happening on Thursday. I'm gonna go watch your watch your buddy Will Smith, their future shark legend. Uh, take a look at those two games happening this weekend. This Thursday should be good. Boston College, Boston University. Hopefully they meet meet up in the finals. All right, Ottawa, Florida. Let's uh, let's go here next. We'll take care of this this left side of the board. Uh, throw to you, Panthers and Senators. You know what? On I was kicking myself. We had the show here. Remember when we were talking about Florida? We were like, "Oh my goodness, Florida! I haven't seen Florida minus one forty on the money line in, in such a long time." They're playing Ottawa. Oh, but they're like, "Will Kachuk play?" There's no Verhage. Uh, I was a little hesitant, and Florida just smoked them. It was like six nothing halfway through the game, and I was like, "What the heck?" Missed a good opportunity to jump on the Panthers. I'm not missing the opportunity tonight to jump on the Panthers. I think Florida will take care of them. But again, not breaking any news. I dropped the ball last week. What what do you like from this game? Yeah, I think Florida takes care of them too. Um, yeah, I got both the Kachuk boys to score. I think this could be a, a pretty rough game. There's some pretty uh, some some funny business. I think Brady Kachuk tied or set a record for most hits. He, 16, he had the most 16. That was against the Devils, but the game before oh, okay, when the these Devils. two teams played was it just was as chippy. You're right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He set the record in the Dallas game or the New Six, Jersey game. 16 hits. 16. I mean, there's players that can go a whole year without 16 hits. Oh my goodness. I would say so. Absolutely. There are players that not would go. I, I, no, not me either. Actually, I would finish somebody in the quarter for sure. Man, ha, they showed a montage of all of his hits. They were all savage. Like it wasn't just, yeah. it wasn't just a little bump. Bumps. It was just like yeah. a full on body. A couple of them were complete interference, <laughs> but it just like didn't matter. Like this guy to throw I sixteen love, hits, and in Brady a fantasy Kachuk. hockey setting like that, he'll win your oh. he'll win your hit, hit category. He so, won it single handedly, single handedly. Right, like you, you just would have such an advantage by having him. Um, love him as a player. I couldn't have been more wrong in Ottawa, but. I was We've very right. Everyone was. Get Chuck. I mean, yeah. I was very wrong. I mean, it might be the most wrong I've been about anything in sports in my life. I was nah. very sure. Um, but yeah, they're bad. 
They're bad. I think Florida pummels them again. Both the Kachuk boys, uh, Brady at 160, Matthew at 155. I'm going to go Giroux at 280, and uh, I'm going to go Reinhardt at 110. Nice. I'm so happy for Reinhardt. I, we've talked about it a bunch. He's been a guy of ours since Buffalo days. But it's so cool to see a good player get to play with good players and then people be like, oh, man, he's a good player. I mean, he's been a good yeah. player his whole life. Oh, yeah. It's not yeah, like he mean, play this, week, this this year. Something that sticks with me, I don't know why, like sometimes comments from people stick with you when like yeah. certain things come up. And I remember writing about Reinhardt, his first year in Florida, just writing about the stacks, I think a DFS stacks or, or best ball stacks over at underdog. And I really wanted to stack Florida. And I think we were right about Florida that year. Like that was when they had yep. the breakout with Huberto and Bennett was good, uh, Reinhardt. And I remember, I think it was like a, it had to have been like a Sabres fan. He's like, man, Reinhardt is the worst. Like this guy is just don't even draft him. Or, and it always stuck with me. And I was thinking, why would he say that? Because he had 20, 25 goal campaigns with very bad Sabre squads. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, once you surround yourself around better talent, you know, your game's going to take another level. And that's what's happened here with Sam Reinhardt. I think Barkov is, you, I know that you really like Barkov too. Playing with a guy like Barkov certainly helps. Uh, another broken record guy here, Vladimir Tarasenko, minus 125 for a point over at DraftKings. He's plus 150 for the assist. He did pick up the assist. I think we talked about him the last time these two teams played. He got lucky. He fell into an assist. I didn't even think, you know, uh, the statisticians were going to give it to us. I was like, I don't even know if that's assist. I think it just nicked his skate. Uh, got lucky there, but I think the process is still uh, correct here. Playing with Markov, playing with Reinhardt on the top line. Uh, Carter Verhage still sidelined. Some more opportunity for Tarasenko. Minus 125 for the point, plus 150 for the assist. I also think Drake Batherson is a decent value for a point at minus 135. He's been pretty decent with Brady Kachuk. He's been pretty consistent all year, yeah. Yeah, he has. I mean, there's been a lot of inconsistency in Ottawa's game this season, especially between the pipes, but he's been pretty good. Florida's plus 106 at home on the spread. And for them in regulation, I would drink a little bit of this juice. I don't mind it. Minus 155 to win in reg. I feel the same way with Dallas. Win in regulation, a little bit of a sprinkle on the puck line there. Uh, and we move along. There seems to be a lot of comments here for um, this game. Frozen flute, Frozen 4, go blue. Oh, baby. It should be pretty good, man. Those two games on Thursday should be really good. Means if I beat you in the championship of Dangle Bet Selly, do I get a free month subscription to FTN? Only seems fair. 100%, Kevin. You know what? Since you're in the finals, you're going to get one anyways. Uh, reach out uh, at Chris Meany on Twitter. Slide in the DMs. Uh, need you to sign up for free over at FTNBets.com and just let me know what email you use. Congrats for getting in the finals. I just squeaked into the finals. It was... Uh, it was it was tight, man. It was tight. It's been a great battle. Bulldog, good morning. Anaheim Ducks uh, this won the Stanley Cup. <laughs> I know that much. <laughs> Living in the past, bud. But 2005, they beat the Sens. They just uh, had Getzlaff on. I, wa I don't watch more Ducks games than I should, but they're late night, and it's just on in the background, and they just uh, had Getzlaff come out. He still looked like he could play, man. Just like he was jacked. Uh, they, I think they brought out him and Ryan Miller, which I thought was odd. Ryan Miller, I didn't remember as a duck too often. Uh, but they brought a couple of Ducks guys out for, I don't know, to drop the puck. But yeah, Ducks won the Cup in 05. They have a great squad that year with Perry and Getzlaff and company. Uh, okay, so some random comments there. But Kevin, good luck in the finals. Hit me up, man. Uh, and if you do beat me, maybe we can do something else there for you as well. But we'll see. Remember, it's a two-week period. Don't use all your moves today. All right, next. Columbus and we get to talk Blue Jackets. This is a lopsided yeah. up here, Troy. What you got? Yeah, Columbus, Columbus and Tampa. I'm going um, all Russians on uh, the Columbus side. Vorkanov at plus 350. Look, I mean, you're going to give me plus 350 for anybody that's playing on the first line, the first power play. Like, I mean, I'm all over it. I mean, plus he's, and you, he's been and, good. And you were last week. You called them both. There was some call. We got to get you in. We got to get you in the FTN discord. You're, you're brought up all the time. Somebody brought you up watching the show. You called both Blue Jackets goals. It was I, off and I had a very good, very, very good goal scoring day on Tuesday. And who was very the good. other one? Was it Marchenko? You had both. Yeah, Marchenko. He scored the goal from the back of the net and banked it off the dude's head. I That's lost right. it. 
<laughs> and uh, I think the the eight way mark parlay missed because Matthews didn't score. That of the all the I people, of, of all the people, <laughs> the guy that scored was seventy goals. goals. Come on, man. But anyways, Columbus, it's a fool's errand. I don't care, and I will continue to be a fool. Uh, Columbus, Vorkanov, and Marashenko. Uh, Tampa Bay, I'm going to go Kucherov at pl- uh, negative 105, and Braden Point at 105. Yeah, Braden Point. Paul and he had two. That was another guy man, I called last week. Nicholas Paul, has, his last two goals are absolute snipe jobs. Uh, one against the Leafs where he picked a corner, another one against the Habs where he picked a corner. Those are two that, that stand out to me uh, that he had from the past couple of days. Nicholas Paul is always a really good kind of long long shot play excuse me because yeah. um because he plays on that first power play like he's plus 425 tonight to pick up a power play point right he's on that first unit and that power play is the best power play in the nhl is is lethal. like operating i think at 33 percent last time i saw it's uh yeah it's lethal lethal man like kucherov the way that he whips that puck around with stamp got stamp coast got point in the bumper he's got headman and then nick paul just kind of like nobody nobody's <laughs> looking at nick paul <laughs> and then before you know the puck's in the back of your net uh plus 425 for a power play point he's plus 105 for a point i like it uh kucherov i'm on minus 110 minus 105 for two points anthony Claire, i'm going back to as well he's plus 130 over at bet mgm for a point he burned us the other day but he did pick up a point i believe in his last game i think the lightning roll in this game and i think that if you're looking for a little bit of a long shot here i would say Braden point for two points uh tonight that this is where we could get in trouble with the lightning because i think they're already locked in they i don't believe like after tonight i think is where we need to be cautious with the lightning like Kucherov's going to want to play and, and get as many points as he can get. Like we've seen Tampa try to chase these records over the years. It's burned them before it burned them. I think a couple of yeah. years ago when they got swept by the blue jackets in the first round. But I think after tonight, if they like, if they don't win or they don't get two points, like they won't be able to catch the Leafs and they can't fall down to the second wild card spot. So Vasilevsky should get some rest here. I, I would expect maybe, maybe him to not even play tonight. So let's keep an eye on all of this, but if Kucherov and Pointer in the lineup, the two points for Kucherov at minus 105 and the two points for Braden Point at plus 155, I think is very interesting. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on. I like also like Braden Point for three shots now that I look at that in the prop shop at minus 136, three shots. I think that's pretty good. Uh, but we'll keep an eye on the Lightning and there'll be some value for guys like Nick Paul, Anthony Sorelli, uh, Brendan Hagel. Like these guys are going to get more ice time, more minutes, EC Mont, things like that. But as of right now, I like the Lightning. Uh, even to win on the puck line, if it's not Vasilevsky, I don't uh, care too much about it. You can just get minus 125 uh, for the Lightning. A lot of comments here. I think we got some stuff from Troy. Golden Seals never won a Stanley Cup. Golden Seals, nice little throwback there. I rock the jersey sometimes. when uh, it's Yeah, yeah, with the Sharks. Veronikov, three points in his uh, five games since top line. Is Boone Jenner back soon? Personal reasons, Troy. Can you give me any inside information? I'm hanging on to him in a couple of leagues, and uh, I want to because he's also a savage and throws his. But he had nine hits last week in a game, which single handedly won me Great a hit player. category as well. So let me know if you know anything on Mr. Boone Jenner. All right, Leafs. So like the Leafs are in action. You know what I mean? Like Leafs lose. Ten- Leafs win tonight. Blue Jackets beat the Lightning somehow, uh, and then we start seeing some guys rest, but. Uh, Toronto and New Jersey, forty-three minute mark. We got we got games still to talk about. My goodness! All right, go ahead. Toronto and New Jersey. What you, what do you have here? Yeah, I'm going Matthews at negative one fifteen to score, and Nylander at plus one fifty. He uh, was all around it, but just couldn't get one to go last night. I think Marner looked pretty good too, but I'm gonna go Nylander here. New Jersey, Hughes plus one thirty. Just so slick with the puck and just an absolute joy to watch. And Timo Meyer, we, I, we've said this a bunch, but I mean, yeah. he looks like Timo Meyer. I mean, it's a little too late, you know, for yeah, you to be Timo bit. Meyer, but here we are. He's turned back into Timo Meyer and he's plus 165, playing on the top power play, playing on that top line. He's turned into the Timo Meyer that we remember from uh, Lee's uh, San Jose Sharks. That's right. Um, yeah, it's hard not to take Matthews because of everything, right? Chasing down 70, 
I noticed against the Habs over the weekend, they put him on the ice, like double shifted him with the empty net, right? Just yeah. trying to get him as many goals as, as he can, as they can for him and chasing down some milestones. He's minus 110 at Fandle for a goal. It's like pretty much the best I've seen in, in quite some time. He's been around minus 140 for, for a little bit now. I think a way to bet him as well, if you want to, is like first goal. He's 8-1 to one at BetMGM to score the first goal tonight. His shots haven't been hitting lately, but I just feel like he's going to continue to shoot. So I'm I'm going to have that on my card, the over 4.5 at plus money, plus 115. And I like Timo Meyer over 3.5 at plus money too. Uh, he's he's also been shooting. I'll have the same game parlay with uh, Nico Heischer, Nico Heischer and um, Timo Meyer, And then I'll do Jack Hughes as Jesper Bratt. I don't know if I'll do any Leafs, but Bertuzzi does like, I know we want to keep going here, but what do you think happens with Toronto in the playoffs? Like, do you think that they, cause what I've noticed since Marner has been out, Bertuzzi and Domi have been way more effective. Like those guys yeah. weren't really doing a whole lot when Marner was healthy and they were on the third line, but since they put him with Matthews, they've been more effective. Then you put, you could put Tavares on that third line. And then maybe they can do some things with Nylander. Maybe they could put Nylander in the middle of the ice. Maybe maybe they're not going to experiment with that on the playoffs. But do you think Bertuzzi and I, it seems to me like Bertuzzi should stick with Matthews into the playoffs? Yeah, I I would bet that that's what they do because they've looked really good together. You know, having a guy like that, Matthews has always thrived with a player that gets his nose dirty. Like that's why he played with Hyman. Uh, you know, he, and that's why he played with Bunting. And Bertuzzi, I think, is – I mean, you can't say that about Hyman now, 50, 50 goals, but Bertuzzi's skilled too, right? Like he's, he's a very good player. And I think we're going to see the best version of Tyler Bertuzzi when the puck drops in the playoffs, and I think they would be fools. I don't, I don't think they're fools. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they will leave him with Matthews. But, I mean, the big question is, is what do you do with Domi? And he's been very effective and very good. And I'll say, like, yes, statistically, you know, points-wise and stuff, that third line wasn't piling up a, a ton of points. But, man, they were effective, like cycling the puck. And they they would just have the puck almost the entire time that line. That you, you need to do that, you know. And, like, you just having the puck is the best thing that could happen to you in, the, in today's NHL. And that was the line that was able to hold the puck and keep it low and keep it in their end. And like, okay, yes, they weren't scoring a ton, but man, that line, the Bertuzzi, um, Bertuzzi, Domi, and Matthews. Uh, the, and Matthews. No, the third, when they were playing together on the third line. Oh, yeah. I I mean, I don't know. Bertuzzi, it was, Bertuzzi, um, was it David Camp? Yeah, I think they had Camp because they had Domi in the middle with Bertuzzi and then maybe Camp. No, they had Domi in the middle, and they had Yarncroc. That's who it was. It was Yarncroc, Bertuzzi, and and Domi, and it was just, I mean, to me, like a really, really awesome third line. So I think that's something that they could do too. I don't know how far Yarncroc away it is, but we'll see. It's going to be interesting. I like Bertuzzi for a point tonight. I mean, just playing with Matthews, getting the opportunity, minus 105. I am going to take a little bit of a flyer on Timo Meyer and Matthews, as I said. I think Toronto at minus 120 on the money line, I think, is is worth a stab as well. Like, you don't get them on the money line like that too often. Um, do you think John Tavares would be a good fit with Columbus? Um, n no. Columbus should be um, – they, they should be rebuilding. They don't, they don't want – they don't want no. John Tavares. He's, he's, I mean, he's, he's lost a, a, a lot of steps, um, yeah. you know, veteran piece at this point. It was always going to be the way, right? His skating was always the thing that yeah. his strike against, he was an exceptional I, player. But yeah. Just, I, I think to Troy, really slow down. the Blue Jackets are still a long ways away. They're going to be rebuilding, getting younger, younger pieces. I think you'd be doing the Leafs a favor, actually taking John Tavares's contract off their hands <laughs> next year. Um, and if it goes sour for the Leafs in the yeah. first round of the playoffs, um, I'm sure that that's going to be the talk of the entire season is how do you get out of John Tavares' contract? How are they going to pay Marner and all these guys? But uh, we'll move on um, from, from that game. Uh, Montreal, Philadelphia in here next. What, what do you have uh, for between the Flyers and, man, Flyers have been just struggling. Holy crap. Yeah. Yeah, they've been bad, and Tortorella's awesome. And, I mean, look, I mean, it, 
a lot of shows have said this, and I think it's it's hard as a Philly fan to hear it. But the truth is, is like you shouldn't even be in this position. Nobody, right. nobody it's thought just, you were going to be in this position. It just but, stinks if you're a Flyers oh, fan because you've been in this position for a while, yep, and yep. you're you know and that just you're watching it fall yeah. apart in front of you. Right. And and the worst case for this team is to finish 17th and be in the middle of the pack, miss the playoffs yeah. and not have a top 10 pick. And that's just the way it's trending. Well, I'm pretty sure me and you talked about this. That's that's I mean, kind of exactly what we predicted. That's what yeah. John Tortorella does. Right. Like yeah. Yeah. even when he was coaching bad teams, they're, they're still going to play hard. They're still going to block a ton of shots. They're still going to scrap and, and kick and scream and and. That's what Philly has done. Obviously, you know, he's sprinkling in Tippett and connect me and scored a bunch of goals. Guys like Cam York and, and Forrester and Farabee kind of rounding into the players. You brought it up earlier with um, Lafreniere. You I mean, a lot of guys in that age range went because of COVID didn't play, you know, like didn't play. So they're missing a whole year of development. So it's even more stunted. And sometimes it takes guys this long. Like sometimes oh, yeah. it <clears throat> it takes this long for players to develop and to who they're going to be. And also making it harder for guys that are in that wheelhouse, like, you know, him and Lafayette and Byfield and Faraby and, uh, you know, Ke- Keandre Miller and, and players in that age group. They're missing a whole year, year and a half to two years of development. They're, they're, they couldn't play. Right. There, there were no games, so they're behind. So, um, yeah, I, I, um, I think that they should think their lucky stars are in this position. They're not making the playoffs. They've been brutal. Um, I love John Tortorella, especially as a person that watches hockey and really doesn't have a lot on the line. He's just, it just never ends, right? There's just always something to talk about. Um, I'm going to go connecting 145 and tip it 185 for Philly and Montreal. I've given up, man. I'm just going Caulfield and Suzuki. It's a one line. Yeah. If yeah. someone's going to score, it's going to be those guys. And it's not only just a one line. It's a really good. It's a really good one line. It really is. Oh, man. Like, and I'm not just saying it be as even better guy next here. Year. It, the biggest guy on the line is a child. He can't buy a beer. Can't buy a bottle of beer in the United States. And I'm just super impressed with Slavkovsky's game. I yep. am extremely impressed with him, man. The, did you see the no look behind the back pass he made against the Leafs? Yep. Just All right the on the way across the ice. He's, Crazy. He's he's doing this stuff nonstop. Like he's re- it's really fun to watch. I've been completely wrong on him, and I wasn't writing him off. I just at the time I was like, man, I really like Logan Cooley. I really like his game. I wish that the Habs. I don't think way, you're wrong on Logan Cooley either. No, he's going to be a hell. We're going to we talk about him, him in a minute. Either. Yeah, him and Gunther are clicking right now. It's going to be a hell of a duo for the for the Yotes for years to come. Uh, but yeah, Slavkovsky, his big body. I mean, he's over 220 pounds. You're right. He's just a child, man. He is yeah. just filling into this role. It's really nice to see him blossom. And credit to St. Louis, man. Ever since he put him with Slavkovsky and, and Suzuki, they've just been cooking. The line generates every night. It's been one of the best five and five lines. Suzuki's actually been one of the better players in the NHL since the All Star break. So he's good, been yeah. he's been so good. And I know I said on this show I think a few weeks ago how I think he's one of the the better centers in the league and uh, how he would be a number one center in on half of the teams in the NHL. And I take I, I still stand by that. I know I got some flack. Yep. I was looking through the comments, and I'm not going to get into it today, but like. I think he's better than Nico Heischer, Mark Scheifele. Like he is on that level of those players uh, to where he's not a top 10 center in the league, but he's, he's flirting with top 15 status and he's he just no continues to grow. <laughs> he continues to grow each year. And I guarantee you, he's going to be in the conversation for team Canada for the Olympics and they're loaded uh, down the yeah, middle definitely. of the ice. Anyways. So uh, Caulfield's got goals in four straight. He's got 20 shots in his last three. Uh, he's just shooting like a psycho and the puck luck's starting to come his way a little bit. So I like the four shots. It's around minus 120. Um, I like Tippett for four shots. It's also minus 120 and Slavkowski's minus 120 as well. I can't tell you who's going to win the game. I'd lean with the Habs. They've been competitive all year long, beating some really good teams and and the Flyers are not playing great at the moment. So as long as it's Matembo between the pipes, which it should be, 
Uh, I think that the Habs uh, may take them, but there's 13 games. We don't need to put our hard-earned bucks on a team like Montreal. Winnipeg and Nashville in here next. Uh, pick them what you got in your slate. Uh, I would imagine Forsberg because he just continues to fire pucks towards the goal. Yep. Uh, Forsberg at plus 125 and Evangelista at 360. Still playing on the top power play. Dude, I'm telling you, next year, this guy is going to be a guy that's going to break be out married, like Forsberg. He's going to, he's the real deal. He's, he's the real, he's the real deal. He's a smaller guy, but he's, he, he's feisty. Like he gets in uh, to the, to the tough areas. He's really good at holding on to the puck, making guys miss, can shoot like e- elite shooter. And, um, Hockey sense is just off the chart. Keep an eye on this guy. Um, Winnipeg side, of course, it's Kyle Connor show. Kyle Connor at 170. And I'm going to go Gabe Villardi. He's looked really good. And, I mean, it doesn't come to any surprise to me. He comes back and Winnipeg starts rounding into form right. again. Yeah, I agree. I've seen the same thing. I like Velarde for a point at minus 115 and Ehlers for a point at plus 100. Uh, and Shifley's playing in the middle between those two guys. So I agree. It's given them, they just have issues scoring goals, but Velarde gives them a little bit more stability up and down their lineup. Tafoli's yeah. kind of been the odd man out, but you put him on the third line. It's uh, it's fine. Uh, minus 109 for the Jets, minus 110 for Nashville. Basically a pick em. I do lean Winnipeg uh, in this game, but I, I like where you're going with... Um, with Volardi and Nyquist is a little bit too juice for a point. I'll probably just stay away from it because it's hella buck and we could see some sort of one, nothing game or two, one game, but yeah. minus minus one forty for a point for Nyquist is still pretty good value considering what he's done uh, this year. Uh, moving right along. We skip over Buffalo and Dallas. We already did it. Uh, Minnesota and Colorado in here next. So the Avs uh, check in at home at minus a 194 and the wild checking in. At plus 170, I'll let you take it away. Uh, hard to ignore Nathan McKinnon's shot prop uh, because he just, I mean, eight or nine shots the other night that he had without Miko Randon, who took two massive hits from Matias Ekholm. So yeah. I don't know his status. Cool. Probably is out for a little bit. Man, those were vicious. Both clean. Echoes. Echoes. <laughs> I mean, it's hard to knock over Miko Randon. He got him behind Echo, the net Echo, once. Ekholm's a big dude. Like, I mean, he that's got two, him twice. Two hops yeah. is going on it. I love it, man. And you're like, you're right. It's clean. But Ekholm is, he's mean, man. He's a mean Viking. He's not one of those he's nice been... Vikings. He's one of those mean Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> he's just the perfect fit for the Oilers. We talked about when they, when they picked him up yep. last year and um, yeah, he's, and he's been so good lately, not just like knocking people over with his shoulders, but also picking up points and he's been productive. Yeah. Yeah. Really good player. Um, a little bit of juice on most books for Nathan McKenna for five shots, but Brett Rivers is hanging minus 125 for five shots for Nate. And that's, that's where I'm going. Jaren's playing really good hockey and, and I like yeah. him for a point today. Yeah. I'm going um, Minnesota, Caprice off at 115 and Hartman at 330. Um, I mean, you said like they're out, like they're not making it in, but um, Hartman's just one of those guys. He's just going to compete and play and be a an MFer. You know, like he's he's a guy that I've always liked. Liked him when he played in Chicago, like when he played. I mean, I didn't like him when he played in Chicago because Preds had to play him all the time, but I mean, I respect yeah. him as a player. He rides that line, you know, and I, and I like that. Um, Colorado McKinnon at negative 130. And I'm going back to my guy, Nikushkin. He's uh, playing on the top power play. He's back. And I haven't been able to bet on him for a lot of the year, but uh, I'm betting on him to score tonight. Yeah, Nikushkin, two and a half shots at minus 140. I do like. He was stuck on two. I thought it was a good play against Dallas on Sunday, but it didn't work out in our favor. But the attempts were there. The usage was there. And if there's no Miko Ranton, and I still like him to get leaned on a little bit, but uh, Lekkonen does stand out to me. He scored the power play goal. He's minus 135 for a point tonight. So uh, it's probably actually one of my favorite plays, especially if if Miko Ranton doesn't play tonight. We'll keep an eye on who's in net for Minnesota. They had a surprise call up. Jesper Waltstead, uh, who's a top pick for them. I actually streamed him in, um, I don't know if it was the Dangle Bet Sully League, uh, but he got a shutout against, I was like, wow, Chicago? Okay, I'll yeah. take that. Uh, he got shelled in his first NHL game 
this season, I think he let in seven or eight goals, but I believe it was against Dallas. It was a tough matchup for him. So this one was a layup. Uh, he had been playing pretty good hockey too for Iowa in the AHL leading up to this start. Uh, anyways, four nothing shutout, 24 saves. Wilder out of it, not officially out of it, but clearly um, they want to give this kid a look uh, with Flurry near the end. And I think Gustafson, I think he's under contract, but. Uh, this is the goalie of the future for the Minnesota Wild. He's a top pick, and he's he's going to be a good one for Minnesota. Uh, risky risky pick stream today, but it worked out. And somebody to keep an eye on, I think, over these next couple of weeks. Uh, welcome in, Die Hard MMA Podcast, Morning Hockey Psychos. We're just about to talk about the Yotes. I'm late, going back to the beginning, but go Yotes. Uh, I love when people jump in and they want to say what up, uh, and yeah. then they go back to the beginning of the show. So, I like the uh, storytelling. Troy says, did you guys see the Salt Lake City potential future o- owner put a survey to see what the team name should be? Coyotes are done. Then boom, here comes Clint. Hey, everybody. <laughs> good, the good timing, timing is... Timing, uh, everyone. Yeah, good timing. Yeah, the timing's fantastic. Um, I, I, I get this part of it. I would do this if I was the Blue Jackets as well. I would take on a year of John Tavares at $11 million yep. if I was able to get a prospect or a first pick in return. We've seen this before, especially with the Yotes. We've seen them take on Datsuk's contract. I don't know, Shea Weber. We've seen yeah. them take on multiple. This is where players go to kind of... <laughs> Sorry, Troy. Uh, that's where Hosa, uh, players go. To... Yeah, Hosa went there as well. Uh, a bunch of players have gone there. But yeah, I mean, it's smart. If you're, They're not going to compete. Contract take on the contract. Here. You're helping out the the Leafs, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Troy Walk them out into the desert, let the scorpions eat them. <laughs> it's a good technique. Oh man. Okay. Uh, moving right along. L.A. in the Ducks. Quack quack quack. Mister Ducksworth. Man, ducks. Ducks are bad, man. Jeez. They're pathetic, man. They're pathetic. Um, yeah, they're really tough to watch. I mean, sometimes when I watch them play, I mean, we already went into this last week, so I'm not going to go into it too much. But sometimes when I watch them play, like Troy Terry looks, it's like, wow, Troy Terry's really good. Wow, uh, Trevor Zegers looks really good. And other times I'm like, ah, I take it back. Like yep. these guys are just, I think they need a new bench boss. Um, anyways, there's a lot that they need, but I think LA should go into Anaheim and take care of business pretty easily tonight. Yeah, me too. Uh, Kempe uh, plus 100 and Fiala at 160. And I'm, uh, you know, you're just throwing darts at this point because no one seems to care one way or the other. Petrano's um, the only guy that that at, seems to be going all two forty. Yeah, and Terry at uh, two. I think he was two twenty. Yeah, I know there's there's value with this team, but I got sucked into them the other day when they played the Kraken and they couldn't do anything. I'm like, oh, wow, Troy Terry plus money for a point. Zegers plus money for a point, but nothing, nothing really happened in that game. Uh, Leo Carlson, I think, scored a nice little goal for them. I'll, I'm going to stay away uh, altogether. Um, I think Quentin Byfield is good value on Quentin Byfield. Adrian Kempe is is playing really, really good hockey at the moment. I'd say he scores a goal, like a little bit of a sprinkle on maybe a two-point night for Adrian Kempe. And, uh, you know, Pierre-Luc Dubois has been pretty decent as well uh, of late, playing with Kevin Fiala. I know he jumped up and, and took Philip Deneau's spot on the second line, but Deneau is back. I think just because it's the Ducks and we could see the Kings maybe score four or five, I think plus 130 for Pierre-Luc Dubois for a point is is pretty interesting. What do we got for yeah. Adrian Kempe? I just want to take a quick peek at Kempe. Uh, even plus plus 100 for an assist for Kempe is good value. Like I think the Ducks could score four or five, and I know he's scoring, but I think pretty good value plus 100 for an assist tonight for Kempe. Let's talk about Arizona. I actually like a few plays here and I uh I've been streaming Gunther Gunther and uh Cooley lately. Nick Schmaltz and, and uh Clayton Keller have been really good. How about Shane Wright? I think there's some interesting plays in this game. We'll throw to you first uh and then I'll wrap up. Arizona and Seattle here tonight. At climate um. I'm at pledge arena. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go uh, Eberle at plus 200 and Barakovsky at plus 300. This is another dart throw. I think McCann must be out. Uh, I didn't see him pop up. And, yeah, I think he is. Um, on the Arizona side, Keller, I don't think I've ever said to anyone 100% of the time for any team, but I know I've said him 100% of the time for the, the Arizona um, Coyotes. Uh, and plus 190, I like that. Like Seattle's, 
no, they've been they've just been brutal man it yeah they've been brutal they've been brutal so i mean like this could be a very high scoring game i think keller at 190 is nice and i'm gonna go lawson Krause 350 because i like lawson Krause. nice almost like wore my uh, lawson Krauss jersey you did you almost wore it Wait, you too yeah. dive you're too it's, heavy into it's the too hot. it's too hot and i and go wings <laughs> uh nick schmaltz has been really really good um for a decade he, yeah he has been probably really like underrated right uh yeah. he's got 38 assists look at the back of the hockey card for nick schmaltz he's got one two three four five multi-point games in his last six he's hit the score sheet in four nine of his last 11 games he's he's an assist guy but man you can go all the way back to february 25th one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen of his last twenty-one games. This guy's picked up a point. That's that's a pretty healthy track record. Points in sixteen of twenty-one. Playing the Kraken, uh, who have been awful for two months, can't buy a save. Schmaltz is minus one forty for a point. I like it. Um, Dylan Gunther is minus one hundred five for a point, and he's plus money for three shots. I like that too. There's definitely some chemistry uh, between him and Logan Cooley. Uh, Dylan Gunther's got points in three straight games. He's got points in five of six. He's got points in four, seven, uh, nine of his last eleven games, uh, and he's shooting too. Three, two, four, four, one, eight. Uh, and then I think Cooley's worth a little bit of a. A sprinkle as well. Uh, he's got points in four of five. Uh, he had a three. He had a hat trick against your Preds, uh, and then he had a two point night the very next night against the Rangers. So two tough teams there in Nashville and New York, where he racked up four goals uh, and five points. And he's been shooting a little bit as well. But I, I think that there's more. I, I'd rather Gunther for the shots. Gunther for a point. Cooley um, for a point is plus money. Schmaltz is minus one forty, and then. I don't know. It's Shane Wright. Shane Wright, very noticeable. Maybe they should have called yeah. this guy up a month ago, weeks ago. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe. Uh, he's plus money for a point as well. He's got, he scored twice the other night against the Ducks. He's played, what does he play? Three games, got three goals and four points in the three games. And he's got nine shots on goal over that span as well. So uh, something to consider Shane Wright, plus 130 for three shots tonight over at DraftKings against the Coyotes. There's actually a lot of plays I like here. I'll have the article at ftmbets.com, and I'll probably have a couple plays uh, from this game in there if you guys want to take a look look for that a little bit later on today. Then we'll wrap up with Lee Sharks. We got uh, Calgary and San Jose here on the board. What are we at, the we are we are flying through this show. <laughs> Psych. Calgary, San Jose. What do you got? Let you wrap it up. I know you got Zetterlin. He's Audrey at Zetterlin. 180. Saren Govich at plus 230. I heard this cool thing on uh, I think it was 32 Thoughts. He if he scores tonight, he'll be the highest scoring Belarusian player in the history of the NHL, beating Marion Gabrick. Wow, which who's is, this? Uh, is pretty niche. Um Sharon Govich. Sharon Govich, cool. Nice. Yeah. Um, San Jose, I'm going Ackland and I'm going Zetterland. Both have been very noticeable. Granlin's been great for them too, but um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm back in the kids here tonight. They're both great, especially Zetterland. Um, uh, they, they found a player in, in, in Zetterland. Yeah, this is a nice return for Timo Meyer. He looks like a, a really good one. Uh, Kuzmenko, Kuzmenko has been pretty good lately. He's been yep. kind of up and down. He had the hot start early with Calgary, slowed down. But now I see him on the top line with Kadri. Uh, he's minus 130 for a point tonight. And uh, that's probably all due. I mean, Zetterlin is minus um, 130 for a point as well. So Zetterlin and Kuzmenko minus 130 for a point. I like the three shots for Zetterlin at minus 114. Uh, but Kuzmenko is... The Flames got an interesting schedule. They're one of six teams with six games here over the next couple of weeks. So, you know, Sharon Govich would be the first guy that I would stream, but Kuzmenko has points in uh, five straight games and four of the five have been multi-point games for him. So he is he's playing pretty good and he's getting the ice time, 17, 20, 17, 19, and 18 uh, compared to like 13 and 14 um, a couple of weeks ago. All right, man, we did it. Those are a lot of uh, a lot of games here. EY, I'm crying. <laughs> Let the scorpions eat them. 
Kempe and Kopitar point parlay always. Yeah, I'll wrap up with some point parlays, but that's a good one, especially against the the Ducks. Leo Carlson is so good last summer. Yeah, he was uh, extremely well played. Yeah, with Nylander and Raymond, they tore it up. I'm still not so. I still think I would have picked Fantelli, Fantelli number two, but we'll see what happens. Leo Carlson is definitely good. Uh, top of the morning, guys. Shot prop king and the madman. Hey, EY, um, they do, as I say, parlay almost hit last Thursday. We talked about that. It almost hit, and it was just Matthew, yeah, I hit. think, who, yeah. who ruined it for him. Uh, okay, I will start here with some sides, and EY will give the, the main course some goal scorers um i like the rangers to beat the islanders i know the Islanders playing you know a couple wins here in a row rangers have been just feeling it man playing really good and minus 130 for them i think is pretty good value i like the florida, florida panthers minus 155 in 60 i also like a little sprinkle to win them to win on the puck line i like the lightning to win on the puck line as well uh i like the Leafs tonight uh you don't get them at minus 130 too often they're playing pretty good as well i think that they could rest some guys here over the next couple of days but i think they'll go for this uh w tonight like the my two favorite plays would be the dallas stars and the florida panthers in 60 in regulation and sprinkles on them to win on the puck line Dallas at home here against the Buffalo Sabres and that's it I'm not going to mess around with uh anything else so uh we'll go Dallas in 60 puck line we'll go Florida in 60 puck line lightning puck line uh Rangers money line Leafs money line I think if there was an upset to oh yeah I also like the Kings puck line as well there's a lot of puck line stuff here but I think at this time of the season we can really hammer some of these favorites that are trying to lock down a playoff spot and, and go into the playoffs really strong against these teams that just don't care. And those teams are the blue jackets, sorry, Troy, the ducks, right? Like we can pick on, on some of those squads. I think, uh, where would the upset be on this board tonight? I mean, you like Detroit. I kind of think Washington could be, uh, Islanders. Here. okay. Islanders. Um, I'll throw out why are the coyotes dogs? Like I like Arizona. Yeah. Let's do Ari- for me, I think Arizona yeah. to go into Seattle at plus one twenty five. All right. Kraken, no McCann. Give me give me Arizona as a as a dog, late night dog. We'll be howling like yotes at the desert. All right. Goals for you. All right. Buckle up, boys, thirteen games. Panarin, <clears throat> Kreider, Nelson, Horvat, Getzel, Sharangovich, Pasta, Marshan, Matthews, Nylander, Hughes, Meyer, Konechny, Tippett, Caulfield, Suzuki, Ovi, Lapierre, Larkin, Kane, Vorkanov, Marshanko, Kucherov, Point, Kachuk, Drew, Kachuk, Reinhardt, Tage, Cousins, Hintz, Johnson, Connor, Velarde, Forsberg, Evangelista, Kaprizov, Hartman, McKinnon, Nukushkin, Keller, Rouse, Eberle, Barakowski, Kempe, Fala, Toronto, Terry, Kadri, Sharon Govich, Eklund, Zetterlin. The eight-way Maniac Parlay. We only got a couple more chances. But this is a good one. This is a doozy. Hey. Panarin, Gensel, Pasta, Matthews, Hughes, Connect me, Ov Larkin, and Larkin is my lock of the night to score. Dylan Larkin to score tonight. The captain stepping up for the Caps. What a big game! What a big game! Detroit's got a home and home with the Habs to finish to finish out the season. And I know Montreal's going to ruin their hopes and yours. They're going to they're going to destroy your hopes. Not going to happen. Uh, okay, so props for me tonight. Uh, let's start strong here with my favorites. Uh, this is the Dallas boys. Jamie Ben point, Wyan Johnson point, Tyler Sagan point. Um, I also like Jamie Ben for three shots at plus money. He's been shooting. He's on that first power play. Uh, parks himself right in front of the net. He's playing really good hockey lately. Uh, Panarin, two-point night. Lafreniere, point, plus 105. Tarasenko, point, minus 125. Kucherov, two points, minus 105. Anthony to declare for a point at plus 125. And I like a little bit of a sprinkle on a 2.9 for Braden point at plus 155. Pavel Zaka for a point at minus 120. Zaka cooking. What do we got here? Uh, Caulfield, four shots, 20 in his last three. 
Uh, Slavkovsky for a point. Owen Tippett for four shots, minus 120. I like uh, continue to lean with some head, with some things that I really like. Uh, Nick Schmaltz for a point at minus 140. Dylan Gunther for a point at minus 105 and for three shots on goal. Adrian Kempe for an assist at plus 100. Pierre-Luc Dubois for a point at plus 130. Uh, I like Nathan McKenna for five shots. It's not breaking any news. Uh, Lekina for a point at minus 135. Got Nachuskin for three shots at minus 140. We can just leave it at that. Some others that I like that I will be betting. Uh, plus money for Timo Meyer for four shots and Matthews for five shots. Bertuzzi's minus 105 uh, for a point. I like Zetterlin for three shots and a point. And I also like Kuzmenko uh, for a point. I actually really like Kuzmenko for a point. You know, just the, the five game point streak and four multi point showings over that span. Uh, pretty solid stuff. And we'll just leave it at that. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to the Dallas guys here tonight. Uh, question from Evan. Uh, what do we got here? After that Stars versus Avs game, I never felt more confident in my cup futures. Got the Panthers and the Stars. I mean, that's what we have from FTN from day one. We have both of those uh, teams' cup futures, and we have an exact uh, for those teams as well. So hopefully we get it. I feel pretty good too, but I'll tell you what. If D Dallas plays Vegas first round, I'm, I'm not going to be feeling too great about that matchup. Uh, if you guys had to pick between Panthers stars cup final, who would you have winning? I would have Dallas. Um, that's probably going to be my bracket is Dallas and Florida finals. And I'll probably pick Dallas. I think the path is a little bit easier in the East. Um, I don't know. I think both teams are super deep. I, um, I'd say the blue line maybe is a touch I don't know. They're both good, man. The addition of Tanev too, like, yeah. he's, like he's just a warrior, and Heiskin can play forty minutes a game if they wanted him to. Uh, but it's I think Ottinger early. has a slightly higher ceiling than Bobrovsky. Uh, But I think Dallas is just deeper, having eight twenty goal scorers and three lines. We talked about that at the start of the show as well, uh, like a fourth line that can actually score goals and they get minutes. It's not like Ryan Reeves and his three and four minutes a game. Like they they have right. really. They have players that they can trust and, and lean on. Pete DeBoer uh, rolls all four lines, and three of them are fantastic. So we'll see what happens. If that's the finals, it's going to be icing on the cake for what has been a really fun year in the yeah. NHL. All right, EY, always a pleasure, dude. We went super long. We're wrapping up the wrapping up the NHL season here. So we'll be back on Thursday, and then we'll start doing some preview shows. We'll start talking some some Stanley Cup brackets. Oh, by the way, we will have a bracket. Um, look for that. We'll talk about it on Thursday's episode. Get you guys locked in uh, to the uh, Dangle Batselli NHL Bracket Challenge, uh, and we'll talk some some fantasy hockey pools for people that are, are drafting some players uh, come playoff time. Those are those pools are always super fun. We'll talk strategy and all those good things. Uh, good luck, EY. Enjoy the hockey. Headset is dead at the right time. We'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers.